Aside from those two, we barely got names. We saw familiar faces every week, and some we knew more than others. Paul Stamets, Anthony Rapp, is a scientist in charge of the spore drive. He is not the chief engineer. We definitely knew Commander Saru, Doug Jones, as he was on the USS Shenzhou in the premiere, was bumped up to first officer, and a second in the main credits. Kayla Detmer, Emily Kautz, at the helm, though she got a cybernetic upgrade before transferring to Discovery. We also recognized Lieutenant. And better. Culber, Wilson Cruz, but he was not the CMO. Not only have we never seen the chief engineer, we've never even heard about them. Star Trek. Discovery's best change has been spending more time with the crew. We lost Culber, but thankfully we got him back. Tracy Pollard, Raven Dada, as she's the only other doctor that we see on a regular basis. We get lots of time in Stamets Spore Lab, but I have yet to see a warp core. What about those friendly faces we saw, and occasionally heard, for a full season, barely even knowing their names? Captain Christopher Pike came to the rescue. We've yet to find out whether or not this is because of injuries that she may have sustained in the first two episodes. Star Trek. Discovery broke this mold with its first season, but as it starts to give us more and more access to the crew that serves on Discovery's bridge, the show continues to get better. Um, like a robot every now and then. Sometimes Tyler manned the tactical station, and sometimes he didn't. Chief engineer in engineering, a chief medical officer in sickbay, and maybe a quark tending bar. Conveniently replaced with Shazad Latif Sash Tyler. He's still not CMO, though it's not confirmed, but I guess that Discovery's CMO is Drive. She has only appeared in two episodes thus far, but the character seems to have transferred over from the out-of-commission USS Hiawatha. We saw the same officers at the same posts week after week, and while we did meet the chief of security, Rika Sharma as Commander Landry, she only lasted two episodes before being. Her interplay with Stamets, and everyone else, is brilliant. We weren't on the Shenzhou long enough to get to know the person who looked like they had a television on their head, but on the Discovery we soon met a robotic-looking person that talked. Captain Lorca, Jason Isaacs, didn't really care who or what flipped the switches on his ship, he had an agenda, and that was that. Whether it's on any of the Enterprises, take your pick, the Defiant, Voyager, or Ops on Deep Space Nine, you've usually got each member of the opening credits snug as their station, with a in almost every Star Trek series or film, the main cast is usually made up of the officers who serve on the bridge. As for the chief medical officer and chief engineer? Well, we did meet Drive. We've never seen main engineering, either. This is not to throw any shade on season one of Discovery. Who and what is holding that ship together, anyway? The only tried and true engineer that we've met is Jet Reno, Tig Notaro, who is a new addition in season two. He doesn't even care about rank, he just wants to know who he's working with. I very much hope that she is made the new chief engineer, and continues to appear on the show.